everybody, it's Sharon here. Welcome back to my channel for those who are returning and welcome to any new subscribers that may be visiting for the first time. So today I'm just going to work on my cover. I've been outside and I've given it a quick sand with my Kaisercraft sanding block now. You could use any kind of sandpaper that you have. And I've only given it a really, really light sand all over the front and back and then... I did do on the inside just around the edges the paper that's on the cover is a little bit shiny so I just wanted to remove some of the shine and I'm just taking a baby wipe and I'm just going to wipe away any powder residue that's left from sanding as much as possible And just covering that inside as well and I don't really want it on my baking paper so I'm just going to get another baby wipe for the back now I'm going to start this cover on camera but I don't know that I will finish on camera but I will certainly let you know what I plan on doing it with the cover as I go whether it's before or after or during my process, I'm not sure. I'm in between coats on the little, what are we calling, the little blocks that we've made. So I wanted to make a start on the cover because it's going to need some drying time as well. Now, I've been trying to decide what medium to use to paint my cover um, whether to use gesso or the chalk paint that I have and the reason I wasn't sure was because I I wanted to steer more towards the white tones than the cream having said that looking at my little my little pieces that I've made here one with gesso and one with the chalk paint there's not a whole lot of difference for me between the two. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to do a coat of gesso over the cover. And then I'm going to do a coat of the chalk paint over the cover. And I'm thinking I want to... Well, I, I obviously need to seal it because I feel like the chalk paint will, um, will lift or peel over time and I'm thinking I might actually use the lacquer that I showed you when I was doing the little blocks to seal it once it's done so I'm just taking my gesso again if you're new I'm using the Deriven gesso there we go okay popping that in my water just to sit and I've got my trusty old brush and I'm just going to paint this all over with my gesso and when I sanded some of these fabric edges did lift which was a little unfortunate the the idea of sanding it came to me after I had glued my fabric down um probably something i should have done before i glued that down but i just didn't think about it so making it work so i'm just trying to get those edges underneath those little fabric pieces across the edge as best i can And I'm going to paint over the fabric, which some of you may find surprising, it being calico and knowing how much I love calico. But again, I want to steer more towards the white than the cream tones. Now, I'm just doing this random. I'm not looking at going in any one direction. I don't want it to be all the same, same. But I do want it to be a fairly even coat.
And you can see I've got some texture there where I've sanded. I'm okay with that. A little bit of, oh, I had it and then A little bit of fluff or something in the paint. I'm just trying to get it off my paintbrush. Okay. And I want to make sure I get those edges. And I'm not renowned for doing a painted cover because, well, I don't do them very often because I do like the tactile feel of the fabric. I like that, the softness, and I just prefer the fabric cover. But this kit, I'm going to add a little bit of water to this gesso. Just, I've got a little spray bottle and a lot of gesso on my hands by the look of that. But this paper in the kit has just been calling out to me and I was actually laying in bed the other morning and thinking about, <laughs> I think I woke up thinking about this journal and I just went a white painted cover that's what it needs to have so there's been little development since then with what I want to do and you will see as I go along but I'm just letting it talk to me I've underestimated how much gesso I would need, so I'm just going to get some more out. Just cleaning off my spatula a little bit. spatula I usually use for my gesso which has a rounded tip I don't actually know where I've put it <laughs> I put it somewhere really safe I'm thinking I have a tendency to do that um, I went looking for it when I was videoing just recently and I was like I have no idea what I've done with it so I'm just going to add a little bit more water down one end I think you can see my tile. Oh, yes, just. I don't want a thick coverage over the spine. I do want to see the fabric texture. And I want to get into... Those creases. Remembering I'm doing a second coat too, so I'm not too worried about little imperfections where it hasn't quite covered properly because I'll probably worry about that more when I do my second coat and I'm just going to focus on this little area along here
When I do the chalk paint layer, I will use the same brush that I've been using in my chalk paint rather than using this brush. So the brush that I'll be using is from a hardware store as opposed to like an art type brush. But I figure I already have chalk paint on that brush and well, the gesso is quite hard on my brush as it is so I may as, might as well use what I've already got going a bit of fluff or something there another little bit of fluff it's amazing what you can see in the light Okay, I'm pretty happy with that, I think. And again, I'm just going to go around the edges as best I can. And pretty happy with that so I'm going to set that aside to dry so I've got that on a separate piece of my baking paper so I can just move it out of the way now when I finish this off I will turn it over and I will apply gesso on the inside of the cover as well and then I will take it and I will pop my chalk paint across the front and the inside of the cover all the way around and then I'm going to lacquer it with the same lacquer um, and when it's finished I will show you the end result so I have on my desk here the cover I've been working on it over the weekend and I wanted to share with you what I've done so I think I left off where I had reinforced the spine with some cardboard and my calico and once I did that, I applied gesso. Now, I did one coat on the inside and decided that I didn't want to add any more to the inside cover, just the edges. And I did one coat on the outside. Then I applied my chalk paint, my DIY chalk paint. And I will again link the video below where I talk about how I made that. And I ended up doing three coats now i've applied it over the fabric i really wasn't sure whether i wanted to or didn't want to um and it was a little bit difficult to avoid in hindsight possibly i shouldn't have attached it or attached the fabric until after i painted but it's given me a completely different look for my covers and i'm kind of loving it so I did three coats of the chalk paint over the top and they were very thin, particularly over my spine. I was concerned about how the joins would go because they move. Um, and I do have a little cracking there, which I will talk to you more about in a moment. But um, so, yes, three coats over there and then I turned it over and I did three coats on the inside. Now, you can see some cracking on the inside particularly with the fabric and the chalk paint. I'll bring that closer so I can try and give you a better look. So I have cracking in here, in here, and again down the bottom. 
I'm not too concerned about the inside cover, but I did end up with cracking on the outside spine and you can see it along here. Or I'm hoping you can see. Because I was concerned about that, I decided to get my wax paste. I got my wax paste and I'll just bring that to the camera so that you can see. So this is the wax paste I've used. And I applied that over the spine and into the cracks, just using my fingers. And it was very, very light, let me tell you. It was a really, really light application. Um, when I applied it to the cracks in here, it really picked up on those cracks in the chalk paint, which I love. And it's just highlighted the, the texture in the fabric. And again, with the little, I call them ruffles, little ruffles from my frayed edges along the side, I've touched around those. The outside of my cover, once I put the chalk paint down, I used my archival ink and I went all the way around front or inside and outside, not front and back, but inside and outside so that I just got a little bit of a lip around the whole thing. And then I applied the wax paste to the outside of my cover as well, to the edges, just to tie in with the spine. I did contemplate whether or not to add the archival ink down the spine, but I like the fact that it was just the paste. So that's where I'm at with my cover. I really love it. It's very different to what I'm used to. Once I did all of that, I then applied two coats of the lacquer. Now it was the hardware lacquer that I had left over from doing my storage unit that I talked about in a previous video. And I used that to seal the chalk paint. I really love the chalk paint without applying the lacquer because I like the fact that it had no sheen but it was really important to apply the lacquer because I feel like the chalk paint would have flaked off and I will just show you I do have a little bit of an imperfection here Let's see if I can get it on camera just here um, there was a little bit of a lump there in the paint and I did try and scratch it off, but it had already dried a bit too much and it's lifted just ever so slightly. So I may have to come up with a different solution to, or I may have to come up with a solution to cover that up. But I do have a couple of ideas floating around in my head about how I want to decorate the cover. The other thing I wanted to say is when I did the chalk paint, I kind of used my brush. I only have this brush here. I used a a wider, I think it was 25mm wide brush from the hardware store. And when I applied the chalk paint, I didn't want it going in one direction. So I've literally done that to apply the chalk paint. And you can see, I'm hoping you can see. It has a textured surface. I'm hoping that that's showing. My camera's a little bit high for me to actually tell whether it's showing what I want it to show. But it's kind of left a crisscross texture, which I really love. I really love the texture that, that it's left. And it's not textured to feel. It's only textured to look at. So that's my cover. And again, I left the inside just with one layer of gesso. I did apply the gesso to the fabric as well as the actual cover. And so from there, I wanted to play with my papers. So I've put this one together. Now, I will tell you, I started to do this video a few days ago. We've actually had the weekend since I videoed last and I started to do this process of putting my papers together and realised that 
where I thought I had printed them correctly, I actually hadn't. So I have lots of papers to play with, but that's okay. So what I had started to mention in that video when I was recording was that you need to make sure that you are not printing borderless and or well, I needed to make sure I was not printing borderless and that my fit to page was unticked and somewhere along the lines I thought I had the settings correct and I've gone ahead and I've done a print run and they weren't correct so I've ended up with my pages too big and I will show you the difference because I do have another set here so that is the difference and for me I've cut this down slightly to fit my cover and it wasn't going to allow me to have the writing at the top and the writing at the bottom having it this size so I am denied as to whether I was happy with it this size and I really wasn't so it wasn't showcasing the papers the way I wanted it to so I have papers I can play with for different things okay so so what I've decided to do is because of the way the pages are when they print they're not actually centered so let me see if I can demonstrate that so these are my next two papers that I want to play with and you can see there's more white space on this side than on this side so if I had have tried to print that back to back effectively I would have ended up with this much of my image out on either side so I had to decide how I wanted to print them so that they would work in a signature and I decided to print them singly and I'm going to do the pages for the outsides of my signatures similar to I actually had my altered books in mind so I've set this one up I have that beautiful page on that side and then this one on this side I'm sorry I can't tell you which kit it's from I think it was kit one the British wildflowers kit one but I'm not absolutely sure um, and I'm going to have them back to back now what I'm thinking of doing is sewing down the side across the bottom and down this side and once it's in the signature I will have pockets in the tops that way I can still attach my laces to the outside edges of my signature I did actually think about having side pockets but I stopped to realize that I either couldn't have a pocket or I could have a pocket but it would kind of be hidden and I kind of like that idea because I like secret hidey spots in journals but I've decided not to do that with this particular journal so this one I'm going to sew around the edges and have top loading pockets so that will be one signature okay my next two pages again I can't tell you which kit they're from I'm sorry I did have that sorted and I just before I turn the camera on I've had a think about how I wanted to set my pages up so what I've done is I've actually backed this one with my pink tea dye collage paper um, and my plan is to cut this page out to size and then I want to create a pocket down the bottom that's what I'm thinking so for now I'm going to cut this page out It's taken me a little while to get my head around what I'm doing and like I said I started this video once before and it didn't work out. I have toyed with doing it off camera and then just showing you but then I was like well then you can't actually see physically what I've done so I don't know whether I will talk all the way through this or perhaps I'll just go ahead and do it and show you the process but maybe I'll do it at, I don't know 
at a quickened pace. I'll see how the video goes, but I was just like, I probably just need to show you what I'm doing, especially with the pages printing, as I said, not centred, which isn't always easy to do when you're creating kits. So, and I love the fact that it's made me think about doing the signatures a little bit differently. Okay, I just need to work out. So I'm doing this to fit the cover that I have. Obviously, if your cover is a different size, you would cut your papers accordingly. And I'm hoping I'm straight. And I'm loving the way that my paper is fitting. Unlike when I went to do this video once before. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Now, because I have the white edge, I want to trim that off first. Go a little bit further across. Sorry, I'm a little bit awkward because I've got extra baking paper and it's a new craft mat and it's slipping. So I'm trying to do this but not have a go slip sliding everywhere. Not quite straight by the look of that or the page is not quite straight. Sometimes it doesn't feed through my printer straight. It just depends on the day. So I hope you're all fabulous. I'm sorry I got straight straight into it, didn't I, without actually saying hello properly. I've had this rattling around in my head all weekend trying to figure out how I wanted to make it work. Sometimes it's good to take a moment or several and think about a project before diving in because, like I said, this particular project has me thinking about doing my journal slightly differently than I would normally and I really, really love that. Okay, so what I'm thinking is... That's like I'm thinking about half or maybe no maybe there. So I'm just kind of looking at this line here. Okay, let's do this. Nervous. Oh, that's pretty. So I haven't decided whether I'll pop lace at the top. I do like the writing showing. So I'm not sure whether I will pop lace at the top of that or not. I'm just going to paper clip these together until I have a chance to score them. And that gives me that little piece to play with later. Okay, so my next pages I've chosen are these two. And I was thinking about using this as my base page. So on the back I have printed the blue paper from my kit. Now this is not double-sided photo paper either. And I will show you, I 
I looked at a plain piece of paper. So this is my plain paper and the blue has come out slightly more purple. So I have to decide whether I'm happy with that because I really love this page against the blue. But this paper, I don't think it's working for me. So what I'm thinking about doing is actually gluing this page to the background and then cutting. So and you don't you don't have to do this, but like I said, the tones just weren't working for me and I kind of match them against the paper that I papers that I chose so and it's really hard to know how prints will come out depending on the paper that you choose to use or individual printers so the colours that I show you from my printer, for instance, won't necessarily be what you get with any kit, not just mine, with any kit, due to me using a different printer perhaps to somebody else and also because of the papers that I use compared to somebody else's choices of papers. Having said that, I'm used to what I'm used to. And I think that's what it comes down to. You get used to what you have and how that colour comes out. So, so I'm just gluing this all over. I'm not too concerned with my edges. Again, I will be sewing this all the way around. And attaching lace. So each of these pa papers will have lace attached to the edges i'm still kind of working out I've, I've picked a couple of laces and then i was like oh my gosh i think that's torn through the paper there i hope not not too bad this edge here i think i've chosen laces but then i just saw some ruffles that i've made and i was like would i prefer those i have decisions to make Okay, I'm not sure that's gone down completely straight. It's not too bad. Okay, I need some paper towel. Sorry about my squeaky, squeaky table. Goodness me. I need to shift it back across, I think. Oh, I might burnish it down on this side. Okay, I think I'm going to be much happier with the colour tone there. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to set that one aside to dry a little bit. And I'm going to cut this one now. I will cut all the way around first. I do want to cut a little piece off, but I think I'll take the white edges off. Oh, wrong paper cutter. Okay, so just cutting the white edges off first. I do want to I do want to cut a little bit off, but I may be able to use the strips that are left, so I will take off the edges first. This slippery paper is really frustrating me. It's really hard to work with. I'm not sure if you guys are getting seasick.
I am loving this paper trimmer. It's so nice to have a paper trimmer that I feel like is reliable. I don't want to say it too loud and jinx myself, but each time I've picked it up to use it, I'm just like, oh my gosh, it just makes me happy because it's actually working. It's not leaving horrible edges. The rotary blade, I think that was what it came down to. It just so much better than the other one. And I don't know if you're noticing I'm doing a few swipes. It actually cuts into, so this is a hard piece of plastic, if you don't know anything about these cutters. And this groove wasn't actually there when I first bought the cutter, so it, it cuts into that slowly. So when I first bought it and was using it, it took a little bit to cut, so I found I had to cut a, a couple of swipes at least before it would cut through. So that's just become an automatic thing now. And I feel like once that little groove has a firm foundation in there, it won't necessarily need to be cut like that. But for now... That's how I'm finding I'm doing it. Okay, so I really shall use my original page because I know it's the right size and the other thing is I usually have these papers a little bit longer too so I have a little bit of an edge and that way I can sit things on them and keep them in place but I haven't made these ones quite as long as I usually do and so they're not anchored down like they usually are. Okay, I need to bring that across a little bit. would have worked better to measure exactly how wide that is how high I needed to cut it but I didn't actually think about it until now so oopsie okay so that is hopefully my height yay and then for this one I guess this is a guide I might use the back So I'm thinking I might take off my, my first row of flowers on either side. See how that looks. And they won't be perfect. Let me see about there. Okay, and so I'm going to use that as a guide to cut this side, I think. It's just so it's roughly centered. Actually, it's right on that two and a half, or one and a half inches line even. So I'm just going to use that. Some little strips there, not sure whether I will have a use for them or not. Oh, and I need that paper cutter because I've got one sheet left to cut. Whoops. Okay.
and then this one should be the right size so oops sorry I'm just kind of lining it up where it needs to be I think I did that off camera simply because that's where there was room on my desk Making sure I'm lined up. Hmm, I had a funny feeling it wasn't quite lined up. Thinking about there. Come down just a fraction, and that was purely because of this number here. So I'm going to make sure that that is the right size. My paper is curling slightly too because of the glue, so. I think I think that's pretty good actually I was going to take a little slither off but I don't think I will and so my idea is to sit that on the edge like that and then have side tucks and that way I can still attach my lace to here okay so I need to get my scoreboard out In actual fact, I think because my scoreboard is not quite center, but it has a funny starting point. I think I've shown you before. My starting point is about here, but the edges, it's like only a couple of millimeters out, but if I don't check it before I score, I always end up out. So, scoring that. And I've just realised that I've gone backwards because this needs to fold this way because it will be on the inside of the page. Never mind. Okay. This one's going to be a little bit trickier, so I might leave that until I work out where I need to score. Oh, I can use this. What am I thinking? It's just not quite okay so if I line this up with this page and score at five whoops sorry I know this is fiddly but honestly it's out just enough to make a difference if I don't try, I'm trying to put trying to put that piece of paper with the one that it goes with and I'm like which one which one okay Adding my paper to the back of this by gluing it has made this really, really feel thick. But it's only one piece, so I'm not too concerned. I just need to move this because I'm having trouble lining it up.
Okay, and then this will sit in here. Don't you love it when you've had an idea and you, you're you really not sure how it will work or how it will look and you start to put it all together and suddenly you're going, yay, it's coming together. <laughs> That's what I'm doing right now. I'm going, yay. Okay. And then my last page. So again, I'm going to... Line this up and I've gone backwards again, but never mind. I should be doing my fold this way, so I'm going to cheat and do both. last I am sorry that everything is shifting around all the time okay so about there Focusing really hard to hold it in place so it doesn't shift. Okay. Oh, that's pretty. Okay. So, they are my outside signature pages. I may need to trim a little bit off once I've sewn them and folded them. I think they'll be okay though. If I sew them when they're flat and then fold, I think they'll be okay. That was something else I was toying with because when I just have them paper clipped and I fold them, I end up with a lip. But I think if they're sewn flat and then I fold, I think they will still fold okay, but the lip won't be so prominent. I think it will be fine. Fingers crossed. Okay, so I'm thinking... First signature, second signature, and third. And then I have this pile of papers and I need to decide what I'm putting in where. I think what I will do is I might do this off camera. I really just wanted to show you how I was setting up my papers from the kit for the outside of each signature. I think I might throw my signatures together off camera and then come back when I have that done. I will add my laces. Now, I haven't decided yet, but I'm thinking about doing a, a hidden spine. So... I'm playing with ideas for my cover. So, yes, I think I'll do that. I think I will leave my video there. It'll be a nice quick video for today. I've shown you what I plan on doing with my papers. I have here... So I have chosen these laces or ribbons. This one here has the really pretty flowers on it. Now... I'm using a wildflower kit and I'm also using the floral study cards kit from or from Junk with Steph. Um, I'm not even sure I mentioned at the beginning that this was part of my design team project. I've just 
I've been so focused on how to make this work. I'm so sorry, Steph. Um, so I've chosen, or right, I've chosen some laces. Let me let me try and get this out. I really loved these laces. This kind of almost has a floral or a half flower pattern. I really love the flowers on this, and. I'm leaving it on the background papers because it makes them pop a little bit more. And I loved this. It's kind of an eyelet lace with a ribbon at the back. Um, and I'm thinking about using some ribbon when I do my cover. And I'll show you more about that in another video. But So I thought this might work as well. So it may be a combination of each. I haven't decided... I did then find some ruffles and I went, do I want ruffles? But I think I really like the lace. So I will pop back. I am going to use a white or an off-white cotton when I do my sewing, just so that you know. I've decided my papers have, because they have the grey background, it's kind of on that cooler tone. So I have like a cool white and an off-white. So I'm trying to, or it's actually a cream, I'm just looking at the label. <laughs> um, I'm trying to tie all that in, but I'm trying to stick to my cooler tones, I think, for this particular journal. And the inspiration for using my coloured papers came from the colours in the paper, uh, sorry, the colours in the flowers themselves. So just trying to tie it all together. Um and oops and with that in line some of the papers that i've chosen are on the colored variety so i'm not quite sure what i'll use i haven't got anywhere near enough papers here to start with but um i will pop off camera and put these together and i will come back and see you when they're ready for show and tell and then we can get on to me making ephemera because i'm excited to do that Okay, thank you so much for joining me. I feel like this was a bit of a hodgepodge video, but I did want to share where I was up to. So thank you so much for joining me. Stay inspired and happy crafting. I look forward to seeing you all soon. Bye for now.